welcome to the Naughty Child Podcast. With me, Richard. And me, Polly. I'm the dad. And I'm the daughter. I did everything before I leave. I need to find that bag of McCoy's. Alex Hartley took us off air in Brighton earlier this year. I'm a huge fan of Pepper. We thought we were really funny. Bobby, I'm doing a <laughs> podcast, man. Come on. <laughs> well, my dog is now called Jimmy Anderson. Oh, well, Manchester Originals aren't through to the Eliminators, so I've got to change that to yeah. Do you cook French food? Like, do you cook frog legs and snails? <laughs> oh, I just locked myself in a procedure room. That Sophie Eccleston's the worst. It's like having a child with you when she's on tour. I don't know whether it shows something about me or whether it just shows I'm a little bit stupid. Holly, have you had a good week? I've probably had the maddest week of my entire life and it's felt like it's lasted about a month, but it's been amazing. So I Is can't... it true we need to be introducing the award-winning Holly Starkey? Oh, don't make me blush. I mean, please do. Please, please introduce me as an award-winning uh, award winning football journalist. Um, yeah, I went and, well, it's, I did actually... I won, I won an award. <laughs> I did win an award. I won a silver award in the Football Content Awards for the category of best women's football organization with a footballers organization i write for so i did win an award congratulations yeah. and uh i mean where where was that held where did you have to Anfield, go? good old liverpool wow so you had a big night out in liverpool yeah to celebrate your award yeah it was great <laughs> sounds absolutely brilliant so congratulations on that and uh, if you want to read any of polly's football writing on vavel then uh, feel free to do that Please do. Get but most of you won't be interested because it's a cricket podcast. Well, exactly. And uh, we are here to talk about cricket. We want to start talking about domestic cricket because this is always the point I look forward to in the year when they release the fixtures and you can start planning the summer. Yes. And it suddenly doesn't seem that far away because when we say summer, we're talking April, aren't we? And mm. here we are, end of November. So you're looking at December, January, February, March, five months away. That's that's not long that's just around the corner that is not long at all that is actually way sooner than it always comes around so fast last season came around super super fast um but anyway we've had the announcement of the fixtures so the kind of big news from that is that uh the final of the charlotte edwards cup i believe will be at derby so it will be finals day and the final of the rhf will be at leicester so a lot of love for the East Midlands, which you know, yeah, there there are better grounds, but we'll take it. I do love, I loved Worcester. Actually, I mean, it did flood and like rain, whatever. But <laughs> actually, as a location, Worcester's very lovely. Derby, I won't say it's as picturesque. I don't even think that's a debate. Um, with the travel lodge, you know, <laughs> not not really my vibe. Yeah, is it Premier Inn at Worcester? <laughs> yeah, a lot more classy, you know. Exactly, exactly. I'm higher, a cathedral and higher class of budget hotel at the Worcester ground. Exactly. Um, it, yeah, I mean it's it's right on Blaze territory, isn't it? So I expect Blaze to definitely be getting to those finals and taking home the silverware, giving home advantage in both finals. I mean that is, if if I were the Vipers, I would be sensing a conspiracy theory here. Well, this is what I thought. I was like, hmm, this is suspiciously East Midlands because I don't think it's ever been that both finals day are within one region. I do appreciate it being like central in terms of if you've got Northern Diamonds and Southern Vipers, for example, you know, it's a good middle point rather than one team having to travel hundreds of miles. But, you know, it is what it is. Nothing will beat Lords in 2022 uh, for the RHF finals. So. You know, the bar is very high. Um, but one thing I did want to touch on was the Central Sparks video. Now, Warwickshire have put out a similar video on social media for their fixtures. But with the Sparks ones, it's all names of teams or whatever. Um, so the admin went up to random people around Birmingham and um, was asking them about their regions being renamed. So they, showed, they basically showed the logo of all the eight regions, well, actually other than Sparks, um, to announce the fixtures and said, you know, what would you call this team if you saw this logo? Um, so Western Storm will now be known as Very Expensive Snot. Um, the Sunrisers are Orange Twizzlers. 
the Southeast Stars are the injured stars, which to be fair, they have had their fair share of injuries, so it slightly makes sense. Um, the Vipers are now the Tigers, so I mean, equally as bad. Just no, go away. My favourite is the Blaze that are now British Gas. Um, so interesting one. Slightly of, of offensive to whoever created the Northern Diamonds logo because this person actually said, "Oh, it looks like this has been created on Windows Media Player." So not great for whoever spent hours on Photoshop doing that. Um, mm. And finally, Thunder, which is actually accurate. It's Thunderbirds on Disney Channel. Um, I'm pretty sure that was that was said by some BOA students. So, yeah, creative flair, clearly. Yeah, fantastic. So check out uh, Central Spark social media if you want to have a little look at that. And um, do we, so do we know who's playing who, when, and all that sort of thing? Yeah, all of that has come out. Some of the grounds are still to be confirmed, I haven't seen, I haven't looked in detail and I haven't seen any Welbeck. But if there is, I'll be I'm sure Welbeck will be there. I, I'm sure Central Sparks will be playing a, a home game in Inverness or somewhere like that. I mean, probably that's what happened last season. So, you know, something similar along those lines. Um, so we'll wait to see what happens. It'll be interesting. Um, but yeah, it, it does make the summer feel not too far away again. Oh, I feel sort of excited. That's absolutely brilliant. The next thing I want to chat about is WBBL because it's coming to the closing stages of the mm-hmm. tournament. Uh, Adelaide Strikers and Perth Scorchers have qualified for the latter stages. As we speak, Sydney Thunder and Brisbane Heat can qualify in their own hands and Hobart Hurricanes and Sydney Sixers will be dependent on other results. This is per the Cricket Her Weekly. Um so that'll be interesting to see how it goes. Sydney Six is potentially not making knockouts. Charlotte Edwards' team disappears. Never heard of that before. Yeah, I mean, it had to happen at some point, didn't yeah. it? Um, it? That they would it, fail to qualify. And they did have a bit of bad luck with injury uh, to Alyssa Healy, didn't they? Um, it's a dog-related injury. You couldn't really have predicted that one. Um, but... Um, but yes, so it's it's looking like, I mean, uh, strikers and scorchers looking very strong at the top there, aren't they? So you'd expect um, yeah, one of those to be the people who lift the trophy. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, no Melbourne teams. The Melbourne teams disappeared quite quickly. Um, obviously, they still play games, but they couldn't qualify. Um, yeah. So a bit disappointing from them. Yeah, and it's like Renegades. It, it, we were saying a couple of weeks ago that they got these superstar batters who regularly seem to fail to score loads of runs. It's 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 really strange. And it, it feels like that when you front load your team with top batters, it doesn't quite work in the way that it ought to. So realistically, it should it should be, yeah, we will, you know, we'll hit 200 every time. And it doesn't matter how bad the bowlers are, we'll we'll be fine and we'll win. But um yeah, it just seems to me it hasn't worked at all for the Renegades this year. Yeah, it's been a strange one, but um, we will wait and see what happens in the latter stages. Of course, England players can't really be involved, other than George Adams, I think, um, because everyone else will be off in Oman. So, yeah, we'll also be following what's happening in Oman because that will be starting very shortly. Well, and then India. Um, oh, gosh, I mean, that's coming up really quickly, isn't it? Yeah, so I think the warm-up games, well, like the A games, start end of this week late, or later mm-hmm. this week. So it is coming very, very soon. We're going to chat about France um, because it seems to be that they've been withdrawn, potentially by the French Federation. We're not entirely sure. We don't know if the ICC are involved in this, anything like that. But they've been forcefully withdrawn from the T10 tournament, I think it is, in December with teams like Italy, Austria. um, And and like an England 11 has come in to replace it, which I don't know who on earth is making that up. Sounds intriguing. I mean, I, it would be great if if the under nineteens could be involved in that in preparation for their tournament a bit a bit later. I mean, it's clearly it's not going to be the England team, and the fact that it's called England eleven means that it's very uh, unofficial, shall we say? Yeah, uh, so it, it almost feels like the branding of the indoor team. That's the vibe okay. I got, but I mean, it won't be the indoor team. So I don't. Very very strange. Yeah, I, I think it's called England Eleven simply because it won't be an a, an official uh, England game. It, you know, it won't count in terms of caps and as it as it were. So it's likely, I think, to be 
um, a, an under nineteen team, I, I would imagine, or maybe made up of amateur players rather than professionally contracted players. I, I'm not sure. Well, we'll see what happens with that because, um, yeah, what's going on in France isn't great, and the players have no idea, which makes it even worse. Because I suppose, I mean, I mean, you you want to play international cricket, you know, being withdrawn from these tournaments is is not the solution to all the problems they've had. Um, so it just feels really unfair yet again. It's such a shame. It's such a shame because it because this should be a moment of hope for French cricket, really. Um, you know, they've been progressing so, so well, and it, this feels like a major setback. Shall we introduce our guest for this week? I'm so excited. There are countries of the world that I love, and uh, Vanuatu is one of them. I have no particular reason why. I mean, it's a member of the Commonwealth, and it's a member of La Francophonie, so it kind of uh, touches on... Uh, different parts of the world it just makes me think it's a pacific island and it makes me think of explorers and stumbling upon a sort of robinson crusoe type um islands uh, just it was amazing to meet selena solomon and to talk to her about the development of cricket in vanuatu well it was so fascinating and i was i was trying to look at Vanuatu on Google Street View, which is virtually impossible. I think there are two parts of it that you can actually see on, on Street View. But um, it was such an interesting conversation. And I suppose Vanuatu are, are at a really incredible point where they've they've qualified for these global qualifiers um, in April, May time. And, you know, they might not get to the, the, the main World Cup, but actually the chance to play against players like Chamari Atapatu, that is all to come. And it, it's very exciting. So enjoy our chat with Selena. So firstly, what's your cricket story and how on earth did you find a love for cricket? I mean, a lot of people have asked me that question. Um, I always I got into the cricket um, sort of by accident. Um, so my cousin plays for the men's team. Um, so I used, um, I used to start, I played netball, um, but um, we made a deal. So he said for me to go and try cricket, but because we were looking for... Um, boys to play mixed netball and I wanted him to come and play for our team but he didn't want to he was like oh you, you want me to come and play netball you have to come try cricket so I finally got into cricket at first honestly I didn't really like it I was like oh this is the boringest game ever um so I went to training I was like so I went now you have to come and try netball but he didn't really um he was like okay then he came play netball and then I didn't go back to cricket training he was like no, we made it till now. You have to like play cricket for like a week. Follow the boys to cricket. So, yeah, um, that was back in twenty, almost end of twenty thirteen. So, I went back training, and then a lot of the girls started coming to cricket. I never left since then. I stayed there. That's fantastic, and and yeah. haven't you done well? Before we carry on to about cricket, I want to know about Vanuatu because I know loads of our listeners will have absolutely no idea where it is or yeah. what goes on there. Tell us about your country. So Vanuatu is um, very, very close to Australia. Don't worry. A lot of um, Australian as well don't know that like Vanuatu is very close. It's two and a half hours away from Brisbane, which is very close, but half of the people don't know. Uh, we are we're located in the South Pacific Um a lot of people know VG, so if I say VG, but maybe a lot of people will know. Um, we're from the East Asia area. So, yeah, we're like in the Pacific Ocean. Um, it's very beautiful, but very small country. So, yeah, if you like uh, snorkeling and stuff like that, I'll definitely recommend to come to Vanuatu or fishing and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of the stuff I read about Vanuatu is about climate change. And yeah. the threat that that uh, brings to the country. Tell us a little bit more about that. Um, I think um, it's getting worse throughout the years because uh, the sea level rise. That's like one of the biggest thing. We get a lot of um, a natural disaster like cyclone, earthquake. Um, one of the biggest one, which is the rising of the sea, which we're getting a lot. But yeah, we're managing it. Um, it's not really great, but. Yeah, it's something that, you know, we can't control. It's there. Um, but yeah, Vanuatu is 
one of the things that it was well mainly known for because of that too, like the uh, natural disaster. And on a more positive note, what's cricket in Vanuatu like? You know, how many people do you have playing? I, I saw one of your cricket grounds and it looks so beautiful and such a great place to play. Like cricket has grown a lot throughout the years. Like I would say six, five years ago, four years ago, we only had like uh, uh, two, two women's team that we had to like, mainly we, it was just us playing um, like people from the um, national team that were playing because we didn't have a lot of girls who are interested. Now I'm proudly to say that we have a team in Port Vila, which is the main island um, uh, where I live, capital of Vanuatu, uh, Port Vila. And then we have cricket in another island, which is uh, Espirito Santo. It's like one of the biggest island in Va- the biggest island in Vanuatu. Um, and also Tana, which I am from. Well, my parents are from because I was born in Port Vila, but it's where I am originally from. So I, I like to say that. Um, yeah. So um, cricket is grow has grown a lot. Um, we have now we have two main cricket grounds, which we call Vanuatu Cricket Ground. We never had that. It's one of the biggest things that we're so proud of. Um, and then we have one which is owned by the government, but you know we. Um, use it for cricket as well so it's like on the cricket we maintain the ground so yeah cricket has grown a lot and we had more girls coming in and it's amazing this year we had a lot of girls also we had like the national um, games for like the Port Vila International um, school games and we had a lot of girls um, registered to play club cricket so yeah it's it's amazing. It sounds absolutely brilliant yeah so um, now, you're currently speaking to us from Brisbane in Australia. So do you spend part of your year in Australia and part of it in Vanuatu? Uh, so um, this is uh, not a lot of people know this, but uh, I just moved here a month ago. Um, we after our qualifier, uh, the EAB qualifier back home. Uh, I moved here with um, six and seven, which is coming on Monday uh, of our national plays. reason coming here is to um, work. Um, and also play cricket, um, work to support my family and um, play cricket, which one of the, I think it's really important because half of our team um, never played in turf wicket before, uh, never seen turf wicket before. So yeah, we moved here because um, I comply with a company who's given us the opportunity to come to Australia to work, but also to play cricket every weekend and to get, uh, to play, you know, uh, quality cricket here has given us that opportunity. So we were like, let's take it. And yeah, so half of the team are here right now. So we're going to be here till our other tournaments. We'll probably get some of our girls to come and train with us here, but that I'm not sure yet. But yeah, so I'm here with because of that, working um, and also playing cricket with the girls here. That is such a good idea, isn't it? For if As the next step for developing cricket in Vanuatu to take that core of players um, and and get them playing in Australia. That is, I think that's a really really good idea. You can only benefit from that. Yeah, and speak to us about those those qualifiers because you've now qualified for the global qualifiers. Um, so chat to us about about topping that group and and actually crucially doing better than um, Papua New Guinea, who have who've been the really dominant team in that region. Yeah, like I was talking to uh, one of the um, one of my friends she, who she lives in Adelaide. I was talking to her about how the tournament went, I was like, you know, after winning Papua New Guinea, which is one of our biggest rivals, we ne- we've we never beat them. Um, They're always the East Asia Pacific favorite. And we're, like, we're not near that. Like, but I feel like this year has been um a lot harder for the girls because we've been through a lot and also amazing at the same time. Like we worked really, really hard because we know that, oh, we're going to host the, um, tournament i think for us we're coming into the tournament we we just had a really really positive mindset we were like you know we we have no pressure you know we're not the top team so let's just go out there and give our best i think winning papua new guinea gave the girls a lot of confidence um knowing that oh yeah we are good enough you know if we can beat papua new guinea let's just try and go all the way yeah so after winning Papua New Guinea and winning few more games, and then our coach is like, "Oh, we need to play um, Indonesia and Japan," and we know that they were they were not gonna come in like 
Um, so if they were going to come in and give 110%, and we were like, you know what, let's just go in and give out 200%. If they're going to go up, let's just go way uh, better than them. So, yeah, I think for us, it, like the tournament back home just went sort of on our way. Like it, all our plans, that the plans that we had all worked out. Um, yeah, it took, for me personally, it took probably like a few days after all the girls, we left the hotel, we went back home and that's when it sank in because I was like, we actually won. Like I went on Facebook and I was like, you know, so positive people congratulating us. Yeah, I got very emotional because I know how, how the girls work for that tournament, especially uh, winning the tournament at home in front of in front of our family. Uh, after we did that, had a lot of time and we didn't win, but winning that one was very special because this year was the same that we had Cyclone and we almost missed the our Pacific Cup in Fiji because um the plane and stuff like that. So uh the winning the tournament was just beyond amazing and I'm like I'm very proud of each and every girls for putting in the hundred and ten percent to win the whole tournament. I, I love that. The thought of the, the great cricket rivalries of the world. You've got England against Australia. You've got India against Pakistan. And you've got Vanuatu against Papua New Guinea. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's great to see Vanuatu have the upper hand in that rivalry now. And yes. another tournament you've been involved in is Fairbreak. And you played for Barmy Army. Tell us a little bit about that. That was, um, it was very exciting. Um, I think when I got called uh, by Sean, which is the founder and this year of um, Fair break he's like oh um you know you're going to Dubai and you're going to be playing for a premier I mean I was very excited that when I saw the team list I was like God. I wish it was just beyond because you know uh, getting to play against Heather Heather Knight and Laura Wolfart and Tot uh, Totin from uh, West Indies those amazing players because I've watched them a lot and I just couldn't believe it I was very nervous but very exciting because I think it was one of those best experience ever because They've encouraged me a lot, even though I was very nervous and they could tell that I was very nervous. They're like, you know, it's just bad and bold. You know, at the end of the day, you're not going to play against us. You're playing in our team. So just have fun and enjoy it. So, yeah, it was playing for Parmi Miami has given, given me so much confidence, um, especially playing with them and playing against some of the best players in the world in the other teams. It was just, yeah, amazing. Um, yeah, I'm very, I was very, very happy and I, that's like something that I would never, ever forget. Oh, we love Fair Break. I think it's a crazy idea, isn't it? Just to to take some of the best players in the world and put them inside, along, you know, alongside, um, you know, yeah. players from all around the world. Uh, but it seems to work absolutely brilliantly. I'm, a good friend of our podcast is Roberta um, from Brazil, oh, yeah? who of course plays for Barmy Army. So she, in fact, oh. she was over in Birmingham during the Commonwealth Games. So we got to meet up with her which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, yeah, she's but, amazing. You know, the, she is, she is. And and the things that, you know, things like Fairbreak has done for Brazilian cricket and just put it on the map has just been amazing. Yeah. Um, I think, like, you know, for, for me coming to um associate country, like, playing and then when, like, when I went back home and then I was telling the girls this, this, and then, like, I played with this. You know, I know this person because I played and, like, it was just amazing because... For us, we never thought that we could have the opportunity just to be in the same field or play against them. So I think Fairberg was just amazing and such a really good idea to mix people around just so like everyone could have the sort of equal opportunity. If I can't, I can't play them in the World Cup, you know, I can still play them in Fairberg. So it was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose with Fairbreak as well, the opportunity to play in such a massive stadium and um, with really good wickets as well, because you mentioned about players not really playing on turf wickets before, but to have the opportunity yeah. to play on really well-kept wickets in huge stadiums with all these players from around the world, people you might have idolised before, it's a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, um, I, I think for our girls right now, like because um, like I've mentioned, a lot of them, they've seen wicket. Um, turf wicket for the first time when we got here like a month ago and they're like oh so this is turf wicket so the ones that we have back home is not turf and I was like no girls it's not turf so we have like a high hybrid pitch which is which is hard and uh, like we only play synthetic wickets like the girls comp so they're like oh this is amazing and I was like yeah it, it's amazing and great opportunity because we were watching um 
uh, like we're watching three fashion stuff like that and a lot of the girls that will be playing in the qualifier that we'll be going into and everyone's just watching and getting excited and I was like you know at the end of the day we have nothing to lose but everyone's just looking forward to go and play and have fun and you know learn as much as we can in um yeah in Dubai yes so Dubai of course is the global qualifiers which is coming up now when exactly is that is that in the spring I oh, know I'm saying springtime uh, I'm talking in northern hemisphere now <laughs> in, <laughs> so in sort of February March time uh, so it's uh, end of April, May. Okay. So yeah. 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 Fantastic. So do you know who you're going to be playing against yet in that tournament or is it still not quite decided? Uh, well, I know some, which is we're going to play against Ireland, um, Sri Lanka, which is, wow. Um, and I'm pretty sure Bangladesh and UAE. Um, and I'm pretty sure Netherlands, um, but I'm not sure quite sure but because they haven't updated everything yet so i've been mm -hmm. checking like you know just to watch that that's amazing isn't it just the the it's the it's the next level for you isn't it you know it's it's going yeah. to be really really interesting uh to give yeah. your team that kind of experience to play in that place against that standard of players when we won the tournament everyone was very excited and and we we were like you know what like We've never won this tournament. Let's just enjoy this moment and then look forward for the next one. We know it's going to be harder. Um, but for us, we're just going to go in, like I said, uh, giving our 110%, leaving nothing behind. At the end of the day, we know that like we're the new team going in. So we, we wanted to go in and learn as much as we can from those amazing players and play, you know, cricket that some of us might never play again. So, yeah, for us, just going in, have fun and give all your best um, to uh, the club or qualifier. It must also be quite exciting because a lot of these teams you will have never played before because they're, of course, not in your region. And playing against players like yeah. Shamari Atapatu, it might be the most exciting <laughs> thing ever, but also terrifying because she is in such good form at the moment. Yeah, so just, <laughs> just I'm not sure, it's before yesterday we were watching Picasso and she was batting and like, she was just mashing the ball every and I was telling one of the girls, I was like, you know that she's going to play in the uh world uh, world cup qualifier it's like the one we're going to and then and i was like yeah and then she's like why are we playing with those amazing like, they're really good they shouldn't be playing our qualifier and i was like yeah it's that's like the best way we're going to learn if we ball to them and they smashed us that's that's okay because we know that oh we need to work harder you know we need we have something you know we need to work more but if they don't smash us you know that oh i mean i tried but like yeah for us like I said, we know that they're going to be way, way better and the, it's going to be harder than what we had back home. But yeah, everyone's just excited and ready, ready for it. That's absolutely amazing. Well, we're really looking forward to that tournament, even though it's six months away. Uh, and just, yeah, yeah, we want to see you do so, so well. I mean, it, maybe it's a bit ambitious to say that you'll get to the main World Cup. But I, I think, as you say, it's it's the next step in your development, isn't it, as a yeah. as a nation and as a team. And uh, I'm so excited to see you there. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, everyone, like we are very excited to go. Yeah, thank you. That was brilliant. I so enjoyed chatting with her. I love the thought of Vanuatu and Papua New Guinea being the big rivalry in world cricket. Well, yeah, let's forget England, Australia. It's completely irrelevant now. I'm here for Papua New Guinea and, and Vanuatu. Um, but I suppose it is, it is a very big ri rivalry because Papua New Guinea have traditionally been the team that have got through. Um, and now it's Vanuatu's turn and hopefully they keep going with that. I love the way as well, when she was explaining where Vanuatu is, she said it's really close to the coast of Australia, just a two and a half hour flight. It's a thousand miles away. A thousand miles. <laughs> but it's the but it is close well, in terms yeah. of for Vanuatu, it's somewhere a thousand miles away is yeah. is close by. But it's, it's a bit like saying we're we're just down the road from Poland here. <laughs> to be fair for Aussies, a thousand miles probably isn't that far. So that's true. That's yeah. true. So all perspective. I think that's everything for this week. Um, yes, uh, we'll be back again next week with another very exciting guest. 
indeed. So, in fact, it's going to be even more exciting because we won't be on Zoom. <gasps> Did you We're doing it in person. Yeah. We are, aren't we? Yeah. Next Thursday, you're going to be home. Yes. Be Not for Christmas, in... surely. No, no, no. Back in beautiful Birmingham for a weekend. Oh, I'm looking forward to that, Paul. We'll, we'll, we'll do you some nice cheese on toast or something like that. Cheers. I need some real food. That'll be good. Well, if you want to follow us in the meantime, our Instagram and our TikTok is Naughty Child Podcast and our Twitter is OO Child Podcast. Oh, 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 o